Hey guys, welcome to you and I design buttons for games. I'm just going to kick this off by creating um, a new document. I'm going to make mine 1920 by 1080. You can make yours um, however big or small you like. And then just to get rid of this dark white background, I'm just going to create an empty rectangle. Um, same size. I'm just going to colorize it with the same background color. Um, uh, open the layers. I'm just going to lock this down. Okay, cool. And now this is going to be our working layer. So this week we're going to be um, taking a slightly different approach where we're going to be creating a casual RPG style button. Um, I'm just going to jump straight into it. So let's do 300 by 100. That's looking pretty good. Um, decent size. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, just round the corners off. So let's just do 50 and that should give us a, a, a perfect curve there because our height was 100 and the radius is 50 there and 50 there. And then what we'll do is we're really going to be using the um, appearance panel a lot during this um, tutorial guys. Um, I mentioned uh, the power of the appearance panel in a previous tutorial. Um, and today I'm going to show you how we can create a really cool looking button with just one path and that's this path here. So I'm quite excited to get started with this one. So we're going to start this by creating a, a gradient ramp and I'll press G and I'm just going to adjust the ramp so it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. I'm going to reduce the value a little bit. The, the lightest point and I'm going to just increase the uh, brightness of the darkest point. And that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, that's great. So in order to do this, what we're going to need to do is we're going to basically be layering up um, these fills and strokes and in and the layering process is going to allow us to um, build up styles basically um, that create our final result. Um, so what I've just done there is I've duplicated the initial gradient and I've dragged the handles in so we've got quite a tight pinch there so it's really bright at the top and darker at the bottom. And I want to remove that darkness so I'm just going to go into the um, blend mode and just um, select screen. And now you can see we've got, it's really bright at the top there. It's looking really good. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to start using these strokes here. So we're going to drag our strokes to the bottom. Um, and the reason why is because we want a stroke around the outer radius. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to make this 30. Yeah, it's looking good already. Um, and just for a... Um, just for efficiency, I think I'm going to drag gradient there so we can just select it quite quickly. There we go, that's cool. And then we'll open the gradient panel and I'm just going to set this to minus 90 and see how that looks. Yeah, that's great because that's light at the top and dark at the bottom. And then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this stroke and then open the gradient panel again. I'm just gonna dock that into there. And then what I'm gonna do is with the new stroke we've just created, I'm gonna put a 90. And what I'll do is I'll reduce this by 15. And as you can see, just quite quickly, using only one path, we've already got a really cool looking um, shape going on, a really cool looking button. Yeah, so as you can see guys, it's all looking pretty good. What we're going to do now is I'm just going to add another stroke here. And I want this stroke to be um, inside, so I'm going to align the stroke to the inside there. And I'm going to adjust the um, 
If I make this about, let's make it 10 and just see what happens. And in order for the, um, the inner stroke to be visible, you have to drag it above the fill. Um, and I'm just gonna make that a solid white and I'm gonna drop the, the opacity down to about 10. Actually 10 is quite heavy, so I'm just gonna half that. And let's just see what we've got going on here. Yeah, yeah that's looking actually um, pretty good. Um, now you might be wondering at what point am I gonna color this and why am I making it black and white first? Well, the reason why we do it in black and white first is because um, uh, shortly we're going to be um, applying color over the top and you're gonna start to sort of see the full power of um, approaching your buttons with um, with this type of um, process, um, grayscaling and then applying the color over the top. So I'll just do continue. And I'm gonna increase this to say, let's do 100. Actually, it's way too big. Um, let's do 50, half that looks about right. I'm gonna align to key object so I mentioned in the previous video and um, to do that you select the object you want to align and then you select the button and then select the button again and that allows you to um, align to key object I'm gonna select this cool font here so look at this guy it's a um, free font on Google um, Google fonts really cool and then I'm gonna add a drop shallow here I'm gonna zero out the blur because we actually want this quite hard but we don't want the y-axis um, that heavy so I'm just going to lower that and then I'm gonna set this to about let's do 10 okay cool that's looking really good so what we'll do now we'll let's throw a little bit of color into the mix and then we'll um, tweak the values based on is sort of the result we get. So what I've done is I've created another fill and then I'm just going to select the default red. Um, I'm going to hop into that default red actually. I'm just going to darken it a little bit so there's a bit more of a, um, it's less sort of primary default. And just uh, select preview if you want to tweak your colors and then sort of see it on the fly. I'm going to go to the uh, blend mode and I'm going to select color and as you can sort of see we've applied the color over the top but yeah you know um, the highlight that we've got is just way too bright the um, the values are incredibly high there so I'm just going to reduce that um, down to about 20% still maintaining the screen and that looks really good okay cool and I'm going to select the button and then apply an inner glow. So inner glow here um, and I'll just see what that looks like. It's looking pretty good actually. Um, it's really heavy though so I just want to um, reduce that. Maybe, maybe down to that. Maybe 30. And that's just going to um, kind of soften it, make the um, middle parts look, um, make the middle parts look, you know, darker. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is we want to apply a color to the um, stroke on the outside. So in order to do that, we'll select the bottom stroke um, with the 30 pixels. And then we're going to just shift that on top. And then we'll select a color. It could be any color, really. So what we're going to do is with the, um, the button selected, we're gonna duplicate this 30 pixel stroke and just place it above the 15 pixel one and then select a color. We're gonna select the same color blend mode and as you can sort of see, we've already got the sort of faux gold effect, which is pretty cool. But we kind of know already at this point that the inner step here is probably too harsh, so we just need to reduce that gradient a little bit, just so it's it's not so harsh and not so muddy. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. And then we're going to create another stroke. Um, and we're going to make this, uh, let's do it 18. And we're just going to fill this in white because we want a real bright highlight here. We're going to drag this in between. So as you can sort of see, we've got this nice highlight now. And then we're going to set this to um, a soft light blend mode. And as you can sort of see, that's looking pretty cool actually. So what we want to try and do is, is um, probably just try and get a little bit more depth out of this area here. And in order to do that, all we need to do is, is kind of just play about with um, these sliders. And as you can sort of see, by adding more depth, by sliding the, um, the darker node, we've managed to create more contrast between the button and the text. And that's looking um, really cool actually. So with the button selected, make sure nothing's selected here. I'm just going to go to Effect, Stylize, and Apply Drop Shadow. I'm going to maybe set this to about 30. I'm going to ramp this up to, let's do 50 and see how extreme that is. And I'm just going to offset this to, let's do 50 as well. And now we can sort of see, you now our button's looking quite good. Um, I'd like to get a little bit more contrast between here and between this point and that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the button and then just put a, a stroke, an outer stroke of, let's say, four pixels. You just see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to place this underneath the color. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to tweak the values a little bit again. And as you can see, guys, you know, we're doing this all with one path. It just goes to show how um, powerful the uh, appearance panel is and how in Illustrator, how it's really possible to create quick buttons that look really good. Um, you know, and that are pretty lightweight as well. What we can do from from the point of doing this is um, create a graphic style that we can, you know, quickly apply somewhere else. Which means, you know, we can skin UI elements, you know, relatively quickly with sort of minimal effort, really. So yeah, guys, that's um, that's the uh, the button build. You know, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, relatively quick it was, wasn't it? Um, didn't take much time at all. But before we go, I just want to show you one really useful tip. Um, just head up to Window, and then go to uh, Graphic Styles, which is here. Um, and by default, you will have these. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create a new graphic style with the button we've just created. So we're going to add that there. And as you can see, it's just added it in. And say, for instance, we wanted to create a panel style that looked like this. Let's just um, align it to the button. Cool, that's looking good. And then all you need to do is select that, send it backwards. And you've already got, you know, the makings of a relatively quick, you know, UI style. It didn't take long. Um, you can round the corners as well if you want to keep it consistent and go for 50 for now. Um, <laughs> and you can see just, just how powerful the, um, the process of building UI elements is when you approach it from this direction before we leave if we um, turn this into a smart object as well um, or a symbol um, we can just add 
add that. Um, so red button. And then we'll dynamic and enable the slicing. That will allow us to do that. And then we can duplicate it or you can double click to get out and then just drag a new instance in. And then this is going to allow us to um, configure or edit this instance of the button. You can see just how easy, how quick that was. We'll just drag that over and play, put it in place. Just align it to uh, that point. So just by using graphic styles, the appearance panel in conjunction with the gradients and a few other um, subtle effects, you can see how quickly and easily it is to create these simple casual style UI buttons. So guys, this has been the UNI Design Buttons for Games tutorial 2, where we covered creating a casual style RPG button. You can take this button, you can do whatever you like with it. I encourage you to build your own button, experiment and see how flexible this process is and how it's going to speed up your workflow for creating UI assets for games. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, share the content with your friends and subscribe using the button below.